like trauma to the body if you can imagine it. Let's say refeeding syndrome usually occurs within four days of actually starting to refeed. Hi, my name is Tommy Kelly. So guys, I hope this video finds you all in great health and spirits as well. Hope you've all had a lovely Christmas and such likes. Today I'm actually going to be touching upon something that's been asked of me very, very often by my eating disorder subscribers. It's basically refeeding syndrome. You all know that I did suffer refeeding syndrome in the past. Basically what this is, to give you a kind of brief history of it, basically when you've been suffering from a restrictive background for many, many years, and you actually start to recover and you add in calories into your diet, your body actually goes into shock. You can actually start off with edema in the legs, which is basically fluid and things like that. And basically what it is, your body goes into shock. It's a, a kind of change in the cells, like the phosphate and obviously the potassium, which regulates your, your heartbeat. They can all get messed up and it can actually bring on a massive heart attack. And this is really, really so sad, guys, because this is a lot of the reasons why many people in recovery actually die, because it's very, very, very serious. And that is why we should never advocate to anybody to just go and smash in the calories. Actually, you've actually it's the carbohydrates that are actually the most dangerous in this kind of type of refeeding syndrome. Your, your carbohydrates have got to be really monitored. I think it's roughly about, it can get down to about, 20% of actually your diet because it can be really really dangerous so this is one thing that I want to advocate and, and talk to a lot of people in the vegan lifestyle when they keep saying just smash in the calories you should never do that like I say I'm going to be going over on a lot of the symptoms and things like this but I just want to give you a kind of brief kind of exactly what it's all about like I say Anybody who's actually had negligible obviously nutrient intake for consecutive days is obviously metabolically stressed from a, things like a critical illness and major surgery. They're at risk of kind of refeeding syndrome, so it can affect a lot, a lot of people. Basically, it's like trauma to the body, if you can imagine it. Let's like say refeeding syndrome usually occurs within four days of actually starting to refeed. Let's like say patients can obviously uh, develop fluid and electrolyte disorders, especially hypophosphatemia, which is basically along with neurological, pulmonary, cardiac, neuromuscular and hematologic complications. So like I say, when I say hypophosphatemia, I mean like, like potassium, that's basically what that means. So like I say the potassium is the salts that run you all your kind of electrolytes in your body and your, can kind of regulate your cardiac arrhythmia and that's why it can actually bring on a heart attack because when you suffer that it's fatal. Let's like see, during fasting, the body obviously switches its main fuel from source from carbohydrates to fatty acids or amino acids as the, the main energy source. So when I talk about um, amino acids, there's actually nine amine, essential amino acids in the body. The rest obviously is just kind of non-essentials, but these are really, really needed in your diet. Let's like see, the spleen obviously decreases its rate of red in blood cells. Let's see, many intracellular minerals become severely depleted during this period as well. Let's see, although your kind of serum levels remain normal, importantly, insulin secretion is suppressed and not obviously this fast at state. And gluco glucogen is actually, secretion is actually increased as well. So let's see, during obviously refeeding, insulin secretion resumes in response to obviously your increased blood sugar resulting in increased glycogen, fat and obviously protein synthesis. Let's see, the, this process obviously requires phosphates, magnesiums and obviously potassium which are all already depleted and the stores become kind of repeatedly used up basically in some ways. Let's see, formation of the, the phosphorylidated obviously carbohydrate compounds in your liver and such likes and obviously your skeletal muscle actually depletes as well so let's like say intracellular ATP and 2 3 diphosphoglycerate is I think it's actually the right word I've wrote down here that's basically in your red blood cells leading to obviously the, the cellular dysfunction and inadequate oxygen delivery to the body's organs let's like say I say refeeding actually increases the basal metabolic rate which is actually your body's uh, 
BMR, that which is your, your body's kind of base metabolic more like at rest, which your body needs basically to burn calories just to keep you alive, like your, your breathing, your heart and such likes as well. So I see intracell intracellular movement of electrolytes usually occurs uh, along with the f a fallen obviously the serum electrolytes including things like your calcium and your magnesium obviously levels of serum glucose may rise and B1 vitamin thiamine actually falls as well let's see cardiac arrhythmias are the most common cause of death from obviously refeeding syndrome which actually happened to me like I'm saying I had a massive heart attack because of that Obviously, other significant risks are including like things like confusion, coma, which it happened to me as well. I went into a potassium coma. This is the very same thing. I was in a potassium coma for three months. So, like I say, there's many, many risks. There's obviously things like convulsions and fits and obviously cardiac failure, like I talked about. Let's like say that this kind of symptom and syndrome can actually occur at the beginning of treatment for anorexia nervosa when obviously you're trying to add in calories and obviously can be very, very lethal. It can obviously occur at the onset of severe illness and surgery as well. And it's basically, like I said, it's the kind of electrolytes and fluid balance obviously increases the workload in the heart to actually that, the actual work heart rate and can bring on a heart attack. I see oxygen consumption is also decreased, which obviously strains the respiratory system and can basically make weaning from ventilation more difficult as well. So like I say for the treatment, I'll go into all the kind of treatment about how we, you go in for the kind of treatment of this refeeding syndrome and such likes. I'll also get into kind of references about how we can go in about it, but that'll be in a separate video. I just wanted to kind of put this out there because this was a kind of hot topic that a lot of people were talking about. So please like, like share and subscribe. Remember, follow me on you now as well. If you can please share my channel, that would mean the world. Like I say, you guys mean everything. Comment below if you like this video and obviously I'll, I'll start getting into the kind of treatment of this syndrome. And I hope you have a lovely, lovely day guys. And remember, keep turboing on and I love you so, so much. And remember what that little guy at the end of the video says, play that outro tofu, Tommy. Speak to you soon, guys. Remember guys, binge on life, purge negativity and starve guilty feelings. Speak to you all soon and love you so much.